Greetings game historians, and welcome to Lord of Lore, where we break down the lore and history of our favorite video games and fantasies. Today, we're going back into the world of Amalur to discuss one of the most prominent races in the land of Amalur, the Dakofar. More practical than their Losafar cousins to the northwest, the Dakofar are known for their seductive personalities and obsession with the power of magic, having made themselves the dominant power in the Feylands long ago. However, who are the Dakofar, and how did they become the great power that they are today? Today, we'll be looking into the Dakofar's culture, history, and future. As always, be forewarned, there are spoilers ahead. Let's discuss! The history of the Dark Elves begins shortly after the Deep Gloam. More a political minority than a true race at the time, the people that would become the Dakofar followed their Losafar brethren in their establishment of the icy lands of Farol and the building of their capital, Glen Suthain. While all Alfar became the world power of magical practice and study, the Losafar elite sought to understand magic in order to pursue their goals of perfection and justice. However, the Losafar's cousins slowly became more concerned with the pursuit of magic itself, as both a way of life and as a way of connecting with the goddess of magic, Lyria. Later in the Alfar history, a savage tribe of humans from Fortinmar known as the Durek began to raid the lands, even spilling into Alfaria. When a Losafar noblewoman was killed in one of the raids, the Losafar gathered their armies and brought a brutal end to the Durek. However, the question of what to do with their survivors would divide the Alfar forever. The Losafar thought that justice had been delivered, but the Dakofar ancestors, less idealistic than their cousins, desired to exterminate the brutal humans. The Durek survivors were eventually released, but when the Alfar held a feast to celebrate their victory, the two sides began to argue to the point that many began to trade blows during this feast meant to celebrate peace and cooperation. As political tension began to grow in Feral, the priestess of Lyria, Bayala Tyrin, was moved to make a pilgrimage to the Feylands in search of guidance. As Tyrin slept beneath the stars, it was said that Lyria granted her a vision of a mountain spire shining in the moonlight and water and she awoke to behold the shoreline cliffs overlooking the Driana's Vane River. She returned to Farol, gathered her disgruntled cousins, and told them of Lyria's vision, and together they marched across the land and settled many villages and cities along the coast, none greater than Glare Ruth Wayne. It was said that the waves and starlight of Arathel cooled their fiery tempers, and it was then that they established their culture and relationship with Lyria. Discarding their cousins' rigid practices, the Dakofar embraced the skill of their bodies and minds, clothing themselves with revealing attire and using their intelligence to influence their neighbors to their advantage. The Dakofar continued to grow, but their first major trial would come when the Jotun of Arathel gathered to attack their cities. Glaruth Wayne and many villages were destroyed, forcing many Dakofar to hide or seek the refuge of the caverns underneath the river spire. However, as the Jotun marched to finish the Dalkafar, Bayala Tyrin appeared at the peak of the mountain spire and used her magic to throw the Jotun into disarray, and the Dalkafar was successful in driving out the Jotun. After the battle, Tyrin named the mountain spire Rathir, the future capital of the Dalkafar, and there the Dark Elves would grow into the greatest power in the Feylands. Over the years, the Dalkafar developed a culture that focused on magic and politics. Though the Dalkafar were led by a monarch, whose line could be traced back to the early days of history, much of the kingdom's laws and goals were governed by a group of secretive mages that served as royal advisors in the Orbacant, led by the Eland High Mage. Though the Dakofar were a practical people that encouraged individual growth and goals, each Dakofar was expected to represent the kingdom and protect their secrets, and young elites who wished to travel the world had to first undertake tests to ensure their loyalty and ability. As the Dakofar continued to grow, Rathir became the economic center in the Feylands, serving as a massive trading port alongside its sister city, Melson Shear, and the Dakofar quickly grew to a world power that would rival even their Losafar cousins to the west. In fact, the Dakofar were able to completely deflect another assault from the resurgent Durek, but after the battle, the Dakofar did their best to avoid conflict and focused instead on their political position. This would change, however, during the Age of Arcana, when Gadflow led the Tuatha Day on to exterminate the mortal races in the Crystal War, the Tuatha swept through and destroyed most of the Dakofar settlements in Clurikon, laid siege to Melsen Shear for nearly 20 years, and even regularly slipped forces into the plains of Arathel. The Dakofar, as the largest kingdom in the Feylands, took the most damage from the Tuatha, as well as made up the main force of the mortal resistance. 
Thankfully, the Dokafar had the help of their Losafar cousins and the mercenary Warsworn, but true victory would not be achieved until the Fateless One freed Melson Shear and fought his way to defeat Gadflow. After the war, the Dokafar enjoyed many years of peace and did their best to recover from the costly Crystal War. Their greatest opportunity came from the great fields of magical Prismere left by the Tuatha Dé On, and the Dokafar colonized the caverns of Danaid and began to study and mine the Prismere until it became the prime source of their trade and magical study. Then came the Age of Ruin, a great series of catastrophes that destroyed many cities and blocked off trade and communication for decades. The Dokafar suffered from this as well, and when the city of Rathir was destroyed, the Dokafar fled to the caverns of Danaid and expanded their settlements and projects within, pushing back any Jotun that tried to invade. When the kingdoms of the Concordance united and drove off the evil forces that caused the Age of Ruin, the Dokafar emerged to greet their Losafar cousins, but the Losafar made a shocking discovery. After years of working with Prismere, the Dokafar's physiology and magical powers had been forever changed, and some would say it even affected their minds, although the Dokafar quickly dismissed this notion. During the Age of Enlightenment, the kingdoms would continue to grow and unite under the Colossi's leadership, but as the years progressed into the Hyperion Age, the Colossi began to grow stricter and more empirical, lending military aid only to kingdoms that agreed to join the Concordance and their laws. The Dokafar knew that the Colossi represented a threat to their interests, so when the Colossi needed new supplies of magic to make new colonies float like their homeland of Idilla, the Dokafar offered their friendship and gave them Prismere to magically supply the cities with the power to remain in the sky. In the following years, the Colossi leaders began to grow decadent and their empire declined, and when the time was right, a Dokafar ambassador entered into an affair with the Colossi Emperor Oromestus, seducing him into spurning the Jotun and forcing them out of their lands. The Jotun, exiled and bitter, were easily convinced to join the Dokafar into an alliance. With the help of a large force of Tirgash, the two former enemy peoples were strong enough to overthrow the Colossi, and when the time was right, the Dokafar used their powers to completely drain the eastern capital city of Pelios of its magic, sending the city crashing to the ground and sending out their forces to destroy the survivors. Though the Losufar led the alliance of the Concordance to the Colossi's rescue, the decisive battle effectively ended the Colossi's dominance. As the Concordance reorganized and the Almain rose as the alliance's main military force, the Dokafar reached out to other kingdoms and forged their own alliance, the Amerinthine one that focused on power and freedom. As political tensions began to rise, the Dokafar knew war was coming, but they were certain that they would emerge the victors. The question remains, will any future content explore the story planned for Project Copernicus? If so, what effects do you think the Prismere had on the Dokafar? Is the Dokafar's desire for power an evil goal, or a just cause to ensure the freedom of the Concordance's neighbors? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below and remember to drop a like and subscribe so my channel can grow. Feel free to comment what you would like to see next, new videos every week. God bless.